So uh, I think, we, as I said, we will uh, grill uh, Mr. <coughs> Dalmia during the Q&A session. But to be able to keep room for Q&A session, I would request other speakers to kind of uh, compress their talk if possible, to the extent possible. We have this uh, uh, good mixture of you know, presentation. Somebody is uh, coming here, somebody making PowerPoint presentation, somebody giving a video. So we have this kind of in the same. And the other thing that we need to, I would like the audience to carry forward is see the swing you know, from the academic the overview to kind of academic insights into what happened with multiple recycling to what are the ground realities to the collaboration. So it's a very complex uh, matrix that we are uh, going through. So to lead us to further in this complex matrix, may I request uh, Mr. Suhas Dikshit. We have heard a little bit on mechanical recycling. Mr. Suhas Dikshit specializes in chemical recycling. So we'll get to, but since he's not here, we have his video. Can I have the video, please? Hello, everyone. I'm Suhas Dikshit, CEO of Epichemi. This presentation is about de-bottlenecking pyrolysis-based circularity of post-consumer and landfill plastic waste. Uh, legislations around plastic tax are adding a lot of accountability towards plastic recycling globally. Uh, Europe has 800 euro per ton of plastic tax since uh, January 2021 and UK will have 200 pounds per ton of plastic tax from April 2022. Europe is raising bar for uh, plastic circularity targets from current 25% to 50% by 2025 and 55% to 2030. Over next few years, uh, similar legislations around plastic tax and circularity would be replicated across the world. EPR targets uh, in India are set to 25% now, 70% next year, and 100% by end of 2024. And recycling targets for flexible packaging will increase from 50% in 2024 to 80% uh, by 2027. More than 91% of plastic waste generated today is mechanically non-recyclable. Even after plastic waste is mechanically recycled, mechanically non-recyclable plastic waste is generated, which is landfilled or burned with huge footprint. Since mechanical recycling alone cannot solve the problem, chemical recycling is absolutely inevitable. From the time that we started using plastics, approximately 6.3 billion tons of plastic waste has been produced. 80% of that has reached landfills. And out of this 6.3 billion tons, less than 1% of all plastic has ever been recycled more than once. Shell, ExxonMobil, BSF, Sabic, and CPChem are few of the leading pet chem giants who have publicly announced their chemical recycling ambitions. By 2030, five of them put together may chemically recycle 10 million tons of plastic waste uh, per annum. Plastic waste generation will increase from 330 million metric tons per year in 2022 to 440 million metric tons by 2030. Since mechanical recycling can't solve all problems, uh, plastic landfilling will increase from uh, 160 million tons per year now to 180 million tons per year by 2030, which means that from now to 2030, we will send additional 1.5 billion tons to landfills. Hence, there is a huge gap of 120 million tons per annum between the chemical recycling targets and landfill uh, quantities. Uh, this 120 million metric tons per annum is the opportunity to make petrochemical operations sustainable. As part of our global uh, expansion strategy, we are curious to build synergies with local players in each country and each city to fill this gap. Two main chemical recycling technologies are pyrolysis and gasification. Pyrolysis is simpler than gasification as pyrolysis involves conversion of plastic waste to pyrolysis oil, purification of pyrolysis oil to remove catalyst poisons that can affect downstream processes and therefore existing pet chem assets uh, should be able to convert this purified oil into circular plastics. Uh, more steps in gasification means more carbon footprint and there are 100 times more pyrolysis plants coming up compared to the gasification plants. Uh, now let's explore the bottlenecks and solutions for pyrolysis-based circularity of post-consumer plastic waste. The first bottleneck is plastic pre-processing. Post-consumer plastic waste can have 
around 5% to 25% of moisture and dirt as surface contaminants. For removal of uh, moisture and dirt, APKME has expertise in shredding, washing, water recycling and drying. Drying of plastic waste can be a complicated process. Uh, APKME has proven expertise in rotary tunnel dryers for plastic waste. The second bottleneck is handling polyethylene tertholate and PVC contamination, which offers, which contributes oxygen and chlorine contamination. Uh, APKME's uh, Pyromax technology removes certain quantities of chlorine, nitrogen, and oxygen during and before pyrolysis to produce higher yield and higher quality of oils. Uh, we offer high flexibility with respect to reaction time and reaction temperature. Our Pyromax uh, pyrolysis technology is highly robust and scalable, has uptime of 330 days per year and is highly energy self-sufficient. The third bottleneck is impurities in pyrolysis oil. Pyrolysis oil which is produced from mixed plastic waste will always have impurities. Such raw pyrolysis oil is purified by our PureMax technology for downstream hydrogenation. Our patent granted PureMax oil purification technology removes impurities to produce pure oil. Most of the critical impurities are uh, most critical impurities chlorine. Uh, APKME has developed game changer technology to reduce chlorine content of pyrolysis oil from 2900 ppm to less than 50 ppm. Uh, fourth bottleneck is high olefin content in pyrolysis oil. Even after removal of impurities, uh, pure oil still has olefins and all of, uh, aromatics. As final step, hydrogenation converts pure oil into circular naphtha or circular crude by increasing paraffins to more than 95% and reducing olefins to less than 5%. Our technology partners can help produce circular naphtha and circular crude from pure oil. Uh, the fifth bottleneck to plastic circularity is shortage of circular naphtha. This, bo this bottle bottleneck is being addressed uh, through uh, scale up and collaborations. This is uh, how the uh, circular naphtha looks like after hydrogenation and this is how the circular crude up to 350 degrees Celsius pyrolysis oil looks after hydrogenation. Uh, we are leaders in pyrolysis with over 47 pyrolysis plants supplied till date since 2007. We have uh, 12 patents in the domain of plastic waste pyrolysis as well as pyrolysis oil purification. Uh, we are developing our own 50 ton per day plastic to chemicals plant near Mumbai. Our global clients include petrochemical companies, FMCG companies, packaging companies, engineering and pyrolysis companies from Europe, UK, North America, Middle East, Africa and Asia. We have research collaborations with Teesside University and Institute of Chemical Technology and we are supported by ecosystems of Shell, Plug and Play, Alliance Strand Plastic Waste as well as KPMG. APKME has end-to-end -end expertise in producing high quality liquids from post-consumer plastic waste. Since 2007, we have combined experience of 132 years in pyrolysis. Our plants have processed 179 million kilograms of plastic waste over 1.3 million hours of plant operation. As next step, uh, APKME would be glad to have brainstorming chart to explore synergies. Uh, in APKME's R&D facility, you can check what quality and quantity of oil can be produced using your raw materials and our technologies. And uh, if you are already producing pyrolysis oil, we can conduct pilot study to check how APKME can upgrade the quality of pyrolysis oil. Uh, we, we will also be pleased to work on an opportunity approach paper to help you maximize the impact of your plastic recycling project. Thank you. Wonderful. I think what these talks are doing is, you know, giving us details about these uh, technologies that we are hearing in, in the recent times. So, ladies and gentlemen, keep your questions ready, jot down, because the next section I want you to ask questions 